friends after a long gap again i am going to upload some lectures in our youtube channel and it's due to your demand it's due to your request so these lectures will contain numericals as well as theoretical discussions both are useful for your board standard as well as for your competitive exams like NEET and JEE etc. Okay, I am Sachitrakar. Welcome to Kashmiris. So I am excited now. So in this lecture, I have discussed the, in previous lecture that in this lecture we will discuss only and only numerical sum motion under gravity. Okay students, we are continuing kinematics motion in a straight line and we have discussed the fundamentals and concepts on motion under gravity and in this lecture we will discuss numericals on motion under gravity and as we have discussed in this lecture you will ask me your doubt numericals and I will discuss the solutions. Let's start. Question number one. Okay. Runita Misra. Question number one. A juggler throws balls, throws balls in air. He throws, he throws. One ball when the previous one when the previous one is at its highest point. Okay. A juggler continuously throwing balls in the air. He throws in such a way that when first ball reaches at its highest point, then it throws the second ball, and so on. Okay. How high, this is your question, how high do the balls, do the balls rise if he throws n balls in one second. Okay, this is your answer. A juggler continuously throws balls in the air. He throws in such a way that when first ball reaches at the highest point, he throws the second ball and so on. Okay. Again, he throws in balls in one second. He throws n balls in one second. n balls in one second but the way when first ball reaches the highest point he throws the second. From these two discussions we will get an idea that time taken time taken by each ball to reach the highest point, to reach the highest point is 1 by n second. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He throws n balls in 1 second, n balls in 1 second. And when first ball reaches the highest point, he throws the second ball and so on. If he throws n balls in one second, then each ball takes one by n second to reach the highest point. Then your question is, how high? Sorry, this is how. How high do the balls rise? Means we have to find maximum height reached by each ball. Before going to solution, the general aspects 
on the motion under gravity. In motion under gravity, acceleration due to gravity acts in vertically downward direction. This is acceleration. And value of acceleration due to gravity in different systems of unit 9.8 meter per second square or you may take 10 meter per second square in M case. And value of acceleration due to gravity is 980 centimeter per second square in CGS. Okay. And value of acceleration due to gravity is 32 foot per second square in FPS. These are different values in different system of unit. Okay. Yes, then sir. another aspect. Suppose we do throw a body from this position. Velocity given to the body is u in vertically upward direction. And as we know, acceleration due to gravity acts in vertically downward direction. Then general sign convention. As we have uh, discussed in uh, many times that in different books and different authors give different statements. But meaning of all statements is same. Sign convention. Just take one type of convention you will not get confused. The convention is, the convention is initial direction, initial direction is taken as positive, positive and opposite to initial direction, opposite to initial direction, you take negative. Of course, you may take vice versa. If you take initial direction negative, then opposite to initial direction may be taken negative, positive, sorry, positive. So, you may use any one of assumption, but I do say you use this one assumption, one convention, so that in future you will not get confused. Okay. So this is about sign convention. Suppose a body, a ball, is thrown in upward direction with initial velocity u and acceleration due to gravity opposite its motion, so that the velocity goes on decreasing. So what is the nature of motion? Retarded motion, retarded motion, because if velocity and acceleration are opposite to each other, then magnitude of velocity will go on decreasing. And at a certain position, its final velocity becomes zero. Time taken by the body to reach the highest position, we have taken it T A. We have discussed it in previous lecture. T A, A for ascent, A for ascent, time of ascent. And from highest position, again the ball returns back with initial velocity zero. When the ball comes down, then it is accelerated motion because acceleration due to gravity is in downward direction. And finally, finally, the body strikes the ground with a velocity V. And time of descent, time of descent is let's take Td. As we have discussed, if AR resistance is neglected, if AR resistance is neglected, if AR opposition is not taken into account, then time of ascent is equal to time of descent and velocity of projection is equal to velocity of strike. Okay, so time of ascent is equal to time of descent, all these we have discussed in just previous lecture. Time of ascent is equal to time of descent, that's equals to u by g. And velocity of projection is equal to velocity of striking, that's equals to root of 2gh. Root of 2gh. These conditions are valid if air resistance is neglected. Then total time of flight means if t is equal to 0, the body thrown in upward direction and finally the body goes to highest point and returns back to the initial position. Then capital T is called as time of flight. Then time of flight is time of ascent plus time of descent. So this will be 
to you by G. These are the basic concepts with which we have already discussed in our previous class. Okay. So now our numerical time taken by each ball to reach the highest point is 1 by n. Then again the same concept the body is moving upward thrown with the velocity u, acceleration due to gravity g and final velocity 0 the body has moved through a vertical displacement h okay then our general equation v is equal to u plus a we are considering time of ascent what it moves upward then the general equation v is equal to u plus a and here final velocity 0 initial velocity we have taken u acceleration Acceleration means here acceleration due to gravity. Initial direction is in vertically upward direction. Acceleration due to gravity is in vertically downward direction. So initial to opposite direction is negative. So you may take minus g and t. This t is a time of ascent. Then g t is equal to u and time of ascent is u by g. What we have already discussed now. Okay, this is time taken by the ball, time taken by each ball to reach the highest point. Of course, we have discussed time taken by each ball to reach at highest point is 1 by m second. And again we do found it, time taken by each ball to reach the highest point is u by g. Then both are same. Time taken to reach the highest point is 1 by m as per the question. And from calculation we get time taken by the ball to reach the highest point is u by g. Now, now, 1 by m is equal to u by g and u is equal to g by m. Thus, from the data, m number of balls are thrown by the juggler. From this data, we do we do got it u is equal to g by m okay and it is asked what is maximum height reached by the balls then we'll use general equation and erasing this part final velocity v v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s in upward motion in upward motion Final velocity is 0, initial velocity is u, u square plus 2, acceleration is g, but opposite to initial direction, you may take minus g and displacement is h, means maximum vertical displacement is h, this is the highest, uh, highest point of the body. And maximum displacement in vertical direction means maximum height is h. Then 2gh, this is negative, 2gh is equal to u square and h is equal to u square by h is equal to u square by 2g and we have got u is equal to g by l. We have got g, u is equal to g by l. Now in place of u we may put g square by m square divided by 2 in place of u g by m and u square means g by n square divided by 2g now our answer is g by 2m square this is your final answer maximum height reached by each body is g by 2m square is it clear Yes, yes, sir. Is it clear to all? Yes, yes sir. Question number two. Take it, please. Question number two. Very good. Madam Arpita. <laughs> Question number two. Arpita Sapati. Very good. And good question also. Question number two. A stone is thrown, a stone is thrown 
भट्टी कल ऑपोर्स फ्रॉम द टॉप ऑफ ए बिल्डिंग फ्रॉम द टॉप ऑफ ए बिल्डिंग विथ ए बैलोसिट ऑफ फोर पॉइंट नाइन मीटर पर सेकेंड We'll discuss the concept. Four point nine meter per second. It strikes. It strikes the ground after two seconds. It strikes the ground after two seconds. Very good. What is? What is height of building? The first one, the first bit, it is asked to get the what is height of building. Then, with what velocity? With what velocity it strikes the ground? Overall, I would like to say you, I have discussed the complete concept on this question in just previous lecture. It is required again to go through the previous lecture and to get the concepts. Then you can take an attempt to solve this numericals in easier steps. So what we have discussed, just I am recalling you. This is a building. Not so tall <laughs> because space is uh, opposed us to raise the building to some uh, um, more multi-story. Like this is height of building. This height is h. A ball is thrown from the top of the building. Like the ball is thrown with a velocity u in upward direction. Okay. So while the ball go, while the ball is going upward, then acceleration due to gravity opposes its motion. You just see the concept. When the ball is thrown in upward direction, acceleration due to gravity is in downward direction. The motion is retarded. Motion is retarded. Velocity upward, acceleration downward. Motion is retarded. So this velocity will go on decreasing. At a certain position, its velocity becomes zero. Is it clear? Yes. Motion is retarded. Velocity goes on decreasing at a certain height above the top of tower. Velocity becomes zero. And from this position, again the ball returns back with initial velocity zero, and finally the ball strikes the ground. Okay. See, this is the initial position of the ball. This is final position of the ball. In vertical direction, in vertical direction, this will be the direction. In vertical direction, this will be the displacement. This is initial position, and this is final position. What is vertical displacement? In vertical direction, displacement is h. h. Okay. Now, just recall about the sign convention which takes a great role in solving the numerical. We are using, I have told you how to get here, time is given. In previous lecture, I have discussed how to get the time. How to get the time. Okay. Let's consider our general equation AC is equal to UT plus half AT square. We are considering the motion. The ball is thrown from the top of tower and finally strikes the ground. So vertical displacement is h, but displacement direction of vertical displacement is in downward direction. 
in downward direction this is initial this is final so vertical displacement is in downward direction but we have thrown the body initially initial we have thrown the body in upward direction so initial direction is upward final direction means opposite to initial direction is downward and as per sign convention initial direction is taken as positive opposite to initial direction is taken as negative so here upward direction is positive and downward direction is negative displacement is h in downward direction in place of s we will take minus h displacement is minus h is equal to u u in upward direction upward is positive initial direction is positive so u t u is positive plus half into acceleration acceleration here acceleration is acceleration due to gravity and direction of acceleration due to gravity is in downward direction so what is sign convention as per sign convention downward direction is positive or negative negative, negative. negative. So minus g into t square minus g into t square and it is asked we have to get what is height of the building means we have to calculate h we have to calculate h so h is equal to minus or you take two steps minus h is equal to u t minus half d t square and h is equal to minus u t plus half d t square okay here initial velocity is given means u is equal to 4.9 meter per second and time taken by the ball means body given that is equal to 2 seconds. You put here 4.9 t is 2 seconds and you take in this case g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square it will be easier for you because velocity is 4.9 and acceleration due to gravity, no need to take 10 because 4.9 and 9.8. 9.8 is twice that of 4.9. So, uh, calculation will be made easier. For calculation purpose, we will take g is equal to 10. Now, you may solve this question and your final answer. You have written the answer. You must get this answer. 9.8 meter. You put all these values and you will get height is 9.8 meter. Then next bit what is with what velocity it strikes the ground? See, initial velocity u in upward direction. Final velocity let's take v with which it strikes the ground in downward direction. Acceleration due to gravity in downward direction. Is it clear? Yes, you may use any equation. See, time taken by the body is given, number one, and we have calculated the height of building. From any of data, you may take either our equation, you see, first equation we may use v square is equal to u square plus 2x. Okay, and final velocity v square u, u in upward direction means positive, here I, I have taken square, if you are taking square then uh, downward direction is negative, no need to take negative, if you take minus v then square of minus v is v square, then u is positive u square plus 2 in place of a minus g in place of s we will take minus h because upward direction is positive, downward direction is negative. Can I erase it now? You have got your answer. Height of the building is 9.8 meter. Okay? I have got this answer. Now, final velocity, you can use this equation. V square is equal to U square. U is 4.9 minus 2, this will uh, come here, minus 2 into 9.8 into height is also 
9 point. Okay. And solving it, you will get what is value of B? C. If B comes in positive, no need to take positive. If, if B comes in positive, no need to take positive. Of course, magnitude of final velocity is positive. But as for our convention, B is in downward direction, you will take in vector form, B is negative. Or, or you may use another equation, B is equal to U plus eight. Okay? Final velocity is V. If you take V negative, then U is positive. Upward. V is downward. U. Acceleration is downward. Minus Z. Upward direction is positive. Downward direction is negative. Then, V is equal to minus U plus Z. Then V is equal to U. U given 4.9 plus G 9.8. Time taken is 2 into 2. Okay. So this will come. V is equal to minus 4.9 plus 19.6. Minus 4.9 plus 19.6. And our answer will be 14.9 meter per second. Okay, so it comes in positive because you have already used this is fourteen point seven, okay. seven, fourteen point seven. So you have already used negative sign. You have already used negative sign. So answer comes in positive. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, finally, direction of final velocity is in downward direction. In vector form, you may take, in vector form, you may take it is minus 14.7 meter per second. Is it clear? Yes. yes sir. Your answer matches? Yes. Sir. Okay. Next question. I think question number three. Very fine. Madam Susri Sangram Mamba. Question number three. Question number three. A ball is thrown upward from the top of a tower. Again, the conceptual question, similar concept. Ball is thrown from the top of a tower. Let's see question number three. A ball is thrown from the top of a tower of 30 meter high, a 30 meter high with a velocity of 10 meter per second. Okay, we have already used the concept in the previous question. I, am, I have already told you how to get this answer. Then let's see what is asked. Find time when it strikes the ground. It strikes the ground and given we have to take g is equal to g is equal to 10 meter per second square. See students, just in the previous numerical, I have discussed the concept. Again, again I am telling you. This is the building. This is the ground. The ball is thrown in upward direction. Initial velocity u. And acceleration due to gravity opposes its motion. Thus, at a certain position, its velocity becomes zero. And again, it returns from this position with the initial velocity 0 and finally strikes the ground. Let when the body is thrown, instantaneous time t is equal to 0, the body goes up and finally touches the ground when time is t. Means here t is total time of flight. The body starts its motion when t is equal to 0. The body strikes the ground when time is t. 
okay so time of flight is t so during this time during this time this is initial position and this is final position so vertical displacement is h means height of tower vertical displacement is h this height h so vertical displacement is also h is it clear yes yes sir. yes sir. okay then we will find time it takes to strike the ground here displacement is h initial direction is upward upward is positive downward direction opposite to initial direction let's take negative and let's use the equation ac is equal to ut plus half at square here displacement in downward direction vertical displacement is h downward direction is negative so in place of h we will take minus h is it clear u u in upward direction upward direction is always taken as positive plus u total time is t plus half in place of acceleration we will take acceleration due to gravity in downward direction so it will be minus g into t square is it clear so minus h is equal to ut minus half z square plus h is equal to minus ut plus half z square is it clear and height height is 40 meter h is 40 initial velocity is 10 minus 10 into t plus half acceleration due to gravity in downward direction okay we have taken already negative we have taken so here positive into 10 into t square so 40 is equal to minus 10 t plus 5 t square is it clear yes sir yes sir then 5 t square minus 10 t minus 40 is equal to 0 so this comes in quadratic form, quadratic equation, 5t square minus 10t minus 40 is equal to 0, okay, just uh, divide 5 on both sides, then it will be t square minus 2t minus 8 is equal to 0, t square minus 2t minus 8 is equal to 0. Now the equation is in quadratic form. You will solve for t. Okay. See, the body starts its motion from top of tower and reaches the ground when time is t. If you solve a quadratic equation, then you will get two values of time. You will get two values of time. One thing you must remember, I have already told you, time can never be taken as a negative. Time can never be negative. Time never comes back. Time never decreases. So time is always positive. Okay. So you get two answers of time. You will select that answer. Which one is more? If you get two answers for time. Then you will select that answer. Which one is more? Because body is directly not falling from the top of the tower to the ground but he has gone to some higher position then returns back ok let's solve will I raise this side yes, yes sir ok then solving the quadratic equation t is equal to a square a t square minus b t plus c this is the equation minus b means 2 b is minus 2 2 plus minus root of b square means minus 2 square 4 minus 4 ac minus 4 a is 1 into 1 c is minus 8 divided by 2 a, a is 1 then time is 2 plus minus square root of 4 minus sorry 4 plus 8 into 4 30 
divide here by 2. So t is equal to 2 plus minus 36, square root of 36 is 6 divided by 2. So if you take it positive, 6 plus 2 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4 second. And another answer, if you take this negative, 2 minus 6 is minus 4, by 2 is minus 2, you take 2 seconds. Because time can never be negative. So, time is 4 seconds and time is 2 seconds. Then what is the correct answer? 4, four seconds. 4 seconds is correct answer. You are right. We have taken the ball from top of the tower to certain highest position, then it comes back. We have got two answers for time. We will select that which one is more. Okay. So on this, on the basis of the same question, different type of bits may be asked. It is thrown at t is equal to zero. It may be asked. What is position of the body at the end of 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds, whatever may be? Whatever may be. What is the position of the body at the end of 5 seconds? We will use the equation AC is equal to UT plus half AT square. In place of T, you will put the time what is mentioned and you will use the sign convention and finally you will get your answer. Okay? No need to take uh, much time. I think this type of concept now clarified. Okay. Very good. You take your course. The next doubt. Next doubt. Prachi. Madam Prachi. A ball is thrown. <laughs> a ball is thrown upwards from the top of a tower 40 meter high. With a velocity of 10 meter per second, find the time when it strikes the ground. I think I will not solve this question. I think I will not solve this question. Because this is the similar question for time. Only the changes are height is 40 meter. With a velocity means u is 10 meter per second, then g is given 10 meter per second square. Then again you use the same type of concept. Initial direction is positive and opposite to initial direction is negative. Oh, I think uh, you have discussed among you and you have asked the same question. You have asked the same question. <laughs> you take it. You have got your answer. Thank you. Next question. Smoothie. Smoothie ma'am. From the top of a tower, 16 meter high. I think this is a good question. How attention? How attention? From the top of a tower 16 meter high, this question is very good question and previously this question has came in different competitive exams have interest. This is a tower. This is a tower. Height of this tower is 16 meter. Total height is 16 meter. Okay. From the top of a tower 16 meter high, water drops are falling in equal interval of time. From the top, this is the top, from the top, water drops are falling with equal interval of time. Water drops are falling with equal interval of time and it is mentioned that such that when first drop reaches the ground, fifth drop just starts. Okay. I have to erase it. When first drop 
Ricesta ground. Ricesta ground. The fifth drop. The fifth drop starts. Question is like this. From the top of a tower, 16 meter high, water drops are falling at equal interval of time. Such that when first drop reaches the ground, fifth drop just stops. Find, find distance, find distance covered by second, third, fourth, and fifth drop. So this is asked, but this question may be termed like this, what is distance between third ball and fifth ball, what is distance between second ball and fourth ball, in many ways this question may be asked, okay. This is the building, this is ground and it is mentioned from the top of a tower, this is tower, okay, tower. From the top of a tower, height of the tower is given 16 meter. From the top of a tower, 16 meter high, water drops are falling with equal interval of time. In such a way that when first drop when first drop reaches the ground, the fifth drop starts. Drop. Drop means initial velocity is zero. zero. For each drop, initial velocity is zero. When first drop reaches the ground, fifth wall stops. Okay. Then this may be position of fourth wall. This may be position of third wall. This may be position of second ball. Okay. Then, if you take for fifth ball, it is asked when first ball reaches the ground, then fifth ball starts. If you take first ball starts at t is equal to 0. I am writing like this for first ball. Or first ball, if t is equal to 0, this is first ball. If first ball, time for first ball is taken as 0, then for second ball, just take like this, for second ball, time is t, equal interval of time. For third ball, for third ball, time will be 2 t. Again, interval of time is t. For fourth ball, for fourth ball, time is 3 t. For fifth ball, time is 4 t. So this is first ball and this is fifth ball. Okay. In reverse way, I am taking the other results. First ball, time taken is 0. We have taken time, instantaneous time 0, then for second ball, time interval is t, for fourth ball, for third ball, time interval is 2t, for fourth ball, time interval is 3t, for fifth ball, time interval is 4t. Then what is asked? Find the distance covered by second, third, fourth and fifth ball. Okay. Then, if this is the successors, I will ask you, try to answer, what is, or I am writing, distance or time, time taken by first ball. See, fifth ball starts, concentrate, fifth ball starts. When first ball reaches the ground, then how much time? 
फास्ट बॉल हाज ट्रावल फॉर व्हाट टाइम फास्ट बॉल हाज ट्रावल दैट आफ्टर दैट फिफ्थ बॉल इज जस्ट स्टार्ट्स इट्स मोशन इट विल बी रिवर्स फास्ट बॉल ट्रावल्स फॉर टाइम फॉर फिफ्थ बॉल टाइम इज जीरो जीरो फर्स्ट बॉल हाज ट्रावल फॉर ए टाइम सेकेंड बॉल हाज ट्रावल फॉर ए टाइम थ्री डी थर्ड बॉल हाज ट्रावल फॉर ए टाइम टू डी फोर्थ बॉल हाज ट्रावल फॉर ए टाइम आई थिंक इट इज इजियर फॉर ओके अब देखें फर्स्ट बॉल इज रिलीज दैट टी इज इक्वल टू जीरो देन सेकेंड बॉल इज रिलीज आफ्टर एन इंटरवल ऑफ टाइम टी थर्ड बॉल इज रिलीज After an interval of time two t, fourth ball is released. After an interval of three t, and fifth ball is released after an interval of time four t. And in similar way, if fifth, if first ball has moved for a time four t, first ball starts here and reaches here. Time is four t. Then second ball has travelled for time three t. Then third ball has travelled. For time two t, and fourth ball has travelled for time t, and fifth ball is just about to start. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. Sir. It is asked. Any doubt? No sir. No sir. This is these are the sequences. Then distance travelled by fourth ball. Distance, sorry. Yes, yes. Distance travelled by fourth ball. सॉरी फास्ट बॉल डिस्टेंस ट्रैवल बाय फास्ट बॉल इज एच सी हियर डिस्टेंस ट्रैवल बाय द फास्ट बॉल इज एच इज इट क्लियर सो डिस्टेंस ट्रैवल बाय द फास्ट बॉल इज एच मींस एच इज इक्वल टू दिस इज एच एच इज इक्वल इनिशियल वेलोसिटी जीरो यू टी प्लस हाफ जी टी स्क्वायर फास्ट बॉल हैज ट्रैवल ए डिस्टेंस 4 टी स्क्वायर This is for first ball. First ball has travelled for time four t. Initial velocity is zero. Then h is equal to u t plus half g t square. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Then first ball has travelled a distance h. H means sixteen meter. Is it clear? Then h is equal to half g into sixteen t square. Yes, sir. Then h is equal to 16 into half g t square. Is it clear? And you know h is equal to 16 meter for first ball. Then for second ball. For second ball, time taken by second ball means time for which second ball has travelled is 3 t. Then distance travelled by second ball. Let's take h one. Is equal to half u t is zero half g time taken by second ball is three t three t square. Is it clear? Then for second ball height is. Or you take this is h one h one is h this is h two this will be descent for second ball h two h two is equal to half g into nine t square means h two is equal to Nine into half g t square, but half g t square, h one is equal to sorry, sixteen half g t square. You solve here. H is equal to half g times is forty. This is h one. H one is equal to h in place of h. You may take sixteen is equal to sixteen into half g t square. Then half g t square is equal to one. Sixteen, sixteen. Get cancel. This is one. Then for second ball, the for for second ball, nine into one. That is equal to half g t square is one. First ball has travelled a distance sixteen meter. Second ball has travelled a distance nine meter. For third ball. For third ball, let's take height is h three. 
एक है म्यू टी इज जीरो जीरो प्लस हाफ जी और थर्ड बॉल थर्ड बॉल इज टाइम टू टी मीन्स टू टी स्क्वेर तो दिस विल कम हाफ जी इन टू फोर टी स्क्वेर दैट इक्वल टू फोर इन टू हाफ जी टी स्क्वेर एंड एच थ्री विल बी फोर इन टू वन दैट इक्वल टू फोर इज इट क्लियर सो नाइन मीटर फोर मीटर एंड फाइनल फेज थर्ड बॉल एंड दिस इज फॉर फोर्थ बॉल इन सिमिलर वे फॉर फोर्थ बॉल फॉर फोर्थ बॉल लेट हाइट हाइट इज एच फोर डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल बाय फोर्थ बॉल इज एच फोर यू टी प्लस हाफ फोर्थ बॉल हाफ ट्रेवल फॉर ए टाइम टी स्क्वेयर हाफ जी टी स्क्वेयर देन एच फोर इज इक्वल टू हाफ जी टी स्क्वेयर इज वन मीन्स वन मीटर ओके एंड फॉर फिफ्थ बॉल वट इज डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल बाय फिफ्थ बॉल जीरो अबियसली जीरो सो इट इज आस्ड इन योर क्वेश्चन फाइन डिस्टेंस कवर्ड बाय सेकेंड बॉल सेकेंड बॉल ट्रेवल से डिस्टेंस नाइन मीटर and third ball distance traveled by the third ball is 4 meter and for fourth ball distance traveled by fourth ball is 1 meter and for fifth ball distance is 0 then it may be asked what is distance between fifth ball and third ball this is fifth ball and this is third ball distance traveled by third ball is 4 distance traveled by fifth ball is 0 zero. then Difference in distance is four minus zero is four. four. It may be asked, what is this? What is difference in what is separation between second ball and fourth ball? According to we can calculate. Okay. And I think uh, some more problems are left uh, to to be asked by you.